हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस वीडियो इज फॉर क्लास एट चैप्टर फोर मेटल एंड नॉन मेटल्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस चैप्टर बिलोंग्स टू योर केमिस्ट्री सेक्शन एज वी हैव डन द पार्टीशन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट फॉर दिस वन राइट सो मेटल्स एंड नॉन मेटल्स इज बेसिकली द कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ चैप्टर मैटर एंड केमिकल फॉर्मले दैट यू हैव स्टडीड इन योर सेवन स्टैंडर्ड दे आर बेसिकली वी हैड स्टडीड अबाउट द क्लासिफिकेशन वॉट इज द बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ एलिमेंट अ मॉलिक्यूल एंड एटम राइट सो वी नो दैट डिफरेंट मटीरियल्स अकर्ड इन अ सराउंडिंग्स राइट एंड बेसिकली वी कैन सी एलिमेंट्स राइट एंड राइट एंड एलिमेंट्स बेसिक यूनिट इज और यू कैन सी द स्मॉलेस्ट यूनिट दैट दे माइट एग्जिस्ट इज एटम राइट बट physically it is not possible so they exist in the form of molecules and all so what we have done like we have uh, classified these uh, elements as uh, into three categories like they might be metals or they might be non metals or they might be uh, metallites so metal is something that you have heard of in your previous classes also and you might be having a little bit of idea about that so this uh, in this chapter we'll be discussing further about them and uh, we'll be uh, trying to look what are the basic properties that will be differentiating them from one another so continuing this thing uh, so having a brief idea about them is like uh, metals are something like which uh, we know are, are the good conductors of heat and electricity and uh, certain examples like basically the elements that you have to remember is like sodium potassium iron like tin lead copper they are the examples of metals and non metals basic idea that we have is like they are the bad conductors of uh, heat and electricity we can say the conductors then we know that conductivity can be defined either in terms of heat or in terms of electricity and for the ex uh, example of this like we can say elements like hydrogen oxygen carbon they are the example of the non metals now metallites are something uh, which you can say uh, uh, Are in between in terms of properties, uh, they are concerned. Uh, like uh, they are behave, they might behave. Uh, they have some properties which are of metal. Then they have some properties which are of non-metals. Like when you will go to higher classes, then you will understand. Like at the normal temperature or the room temperature, they behave as insulators or you can say uh, bad conductors. But when the temperature is increased up to a certain level, they will start behaving as a conductor. right then moving on uh, we have to study about the occurrence of metals basically we know that uh, elements uh, uh, we have classified in terms of our finding and uh, we have seen like uh, in our earth's crust if you have to say right so uh, the most abundant metal in the earth's crust is basically your aluminum and uh, metals or you can say the basically the elements which we have classified are not something which occur in the free state means like you start digging uh, from the soil and you can't say that i have found iron or i have found aluminum right so what happens like Uh, they'll combine together and they'll form certain compounds. So uh, they are found basically in the form of combined state, right? And those combined state occurrence of uh, elements, or you can say the metals or non-metals, uh, we are calling them as a uh, minerals, right? Uh, so now uh, we have to understand this specific term that is called as ore. So what is ore? Is like basically. Uh, those minerals or the rocky pieces of mountains that we start digging uh, like when the earth core and we are able to find them uh, so the basic specific mineral of that a uh, specific type of metal or metal non metal is called as a ore right uh, for example if you have to understand bauxite is something which is the ore for aluminium hematite or you can say iron pyrite are the ores for uh, iron actually like uh, now uh, this branch of science which specifically you can say uh, which deals with the extraction of metals from their from their respective ores is called as metallurgy right and uh, depending upon the reactivity that will be studying further in this chapter is something like uh, if there is some elements reactivity or you can say some metals reactivity is very higher then they will always be find in the combined state uh, and if they are uh, you can say least reactive toward anything which is occurring around them then they will be found in the free state so uh, we have seen basically certain uh, we'll be looking at certain uh, occurrence of certain non metals so we know that like hydrogen is basically uh, the most abundant element in the universe right uh, it It is uh, you can say it is either found in the free state or in the combined state also you can found right find uh, like for example water if we are looking at the chemical formula it is a uh, basically having hydrogen and oxygen right similarly nitrogen as we have studied in our chapter uh, it also occurs in the form of free state uh, and also like uh, there are different uh, Uh, we can say like uh, compounds like nitrates and nitrites as part of nitrogen cycle that we have studied they are found in the solid form also oxygen is like uh, you have to understand is the most abundant non metal that is found in the earth's crust right uh, basically uh, it occurs in the you can say free state in combined state if you have to check out there are certain different specific compounds like where it is found the best example is of water 
carbon uh, like carbon is something like you can say uh, it exists in different type of allotropes right uh, having different physical forms right uh, like so as far as one of the hardest substance we have a category like uh, we know that metals are usually harder but carbon being a non metal is uh, you can say the one of its form there is a diamond is one of the hardest uh, thing that is found on earth right sulfur uh, it can also be found in the free state and also in the combined state silicon is something like it is always uh, found in the combined state basically it will combine with some other element and will be found in the form of a compound now uh, going on uh, we'll have these physical properties of metals and non metals that we have to study so basically first we have is a physical state like metals are generally solid except for this uh, mercury and gallium which are uh, usually liquid uh, mercury is something that you have seen in your thermometers also right they are usually liquid so majority of them are metals only as far as non metals are considered uh, like they can be either anything of either of anything like they might be liquid solid or gas normally the gas is hydrogen oxygen sulfur they are uh, oxygen sorry hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen they are gases then uh, uh, in terms of solid if you have to say uh, sorry uh, what i'm saying uh, it's like hydrogen oxygen and uh, nitrogen you are saying i was saying right they are in the form of gases then uh, carbon is something which is found in solid form right <coughs> now there is this metal non metal uh, non metal that is a bromine which is found in the liquid state only now comes the property of hardness and strength so we have a general uh, we have like majority of the metals are uh, very hard for example you have seen iron copper and aluminum but uh, if we have to consider the sodium and potassium they are very very soft like uh, they are like uh, you can say very soft as compared to butter they are softer now the last one is non metals non metals are basically soft except uh, like for the very few like uh, you can say graphite or diamond Uh, like which is again an allotrop uh, something which is a form of uh, carbon only lustrous we know that there is a specific shiny wali property so metals are usually uh, shiny and uh, as far as non metals are concerned they don't uh, they are not uh, that much of lustrous except for uh, iodine and graphite that you can say right now malleability and ductility are the property that we have to be uh, very careful uh, like they might be confusing for some people it's like when you read them you'll understand but you will be uh, Uh, like uh, confusion will be regarding the understanding or uh, like if someone asks you might forget so have uh, this uh, time this not in your head is like malleability something like a uh Uh, when you are beating a metal with a hammer, like they will be converted into into thin sheets, right? So uh, malleability is a example. Best you have to see is like if you go to some sweet shop, you might see some silver foil on the top of it, or you can say like the tiffin that you are getting. Uh, so your moms are usually using alum aluminium foil, right? So this property when you are hitting a metal with a hammer, they are being converted into thin sheets is called as malleability. And ductility is something like when you are hitting a metal, and then they might uh, start extending. Uh, or you can convert them into thin wires like you have copper wires in your house right uh, now moving on sonorous is something you know that uh, uh, if you go to some temples and all and you have this bell right so this uh, specific sound that you get when you start hitting a metal uh, right that is a characteristic property that property is called as sonorous and uh, melting and boiling points uh, you know that uh, very very high as uh, for metals as compared to non metals density you know that uh, like if you have a uh, you know, the best example to understand is like if you have a iron piece and a wooden piece of same dimensions exactly same length breadth and height the weight of uh, the iron piece will be comparatively very very high as compared to your uh, wooden piece right and conductivity that we have seen is like can be differentiated into two categories it might be either thermal conductivity or your electrical conductivity right so it's both uh, uh, both these properties or you can say conductivity is very very good uh, in terms of metal as compared to non metals except for the form that is your graphite for the carbon that we say right and uh, now moving on uh, these were the physical properties that we have discussed for the metals and non metals now we'll be checking out the chemical properties so first property that we have for metals is like how they react with oxygen so general definition that you have to understand or you have to remember is like whenever a metal uh, react with oxygen they will form a uh, metal oxide and metal oxides is uh, the basic general formula that they have given in your book is like mo right so you can understand m stands for the metal and o stands for the oxygen however all the element all the metals will not form follow this uh, uh, formula it's just a basic structure to understand like what is the basic component of a metal oxide so uh, <clears throat> so what happens is like if you get a specific metal oxide and you try uh, making a mixture of it by adding some few drops of water and uh, you use a litmus paper then you will find that they turn red litmus to blue that means basically they are basic in nature as we have studied 
that red uh, when the whenever the red litmus is getting turned into blue then the nature of that substance will be basic in nature right now uh, moving on uh, like in the examples they have shown uh, in your book are of magnesium oxide and uh, sodium oxide so one thing uh, that they have you have to be very careful like metals like uh, uh, sodium and uh, potassium they are very 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 i am again saying they are very very reactive uh, with oxygen and they are so much reactive that uh, we usually avoid them keeping in the fresh air right so it's like you know that the oxygen present in the atmosphere will rapidly react with the sodium uh, forming a uh, sodium oxide right so basically what we how we are using is like in the labs and all is like we are dipping them in the kerosene as kerosene uh, uh make sure that the uh, sodium is not or sodium or the potassium are not coming in contact with the oxygen right now the reaction of non metals with oxygen is again almost similar however the nature of the uh, non metal oxides is quite different that they are basically acidic so the best examples are of your carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide and your uh nitrogen dioxide right they are very uh, you can say acidic in nature and the way of finding out is like again using a litmus paper and we'll find that the blue litmus paper will be converted into red now reaction of metals with oxides if you have to understand is like uh, depending upon the reactivity basically the metals react with the water and uh, what they form is like uh, they'll form their corresponding hydroxides but apart from the formation of metal hydroxide what important is like uh, the formation of hydrogen gas right and uh, uh, so what in our book we have given we have, we have a three set of equation to for showing the reactivity like some metals are so much reactive uh, show very high reactivity towards water that is they will uh, react with the cold water and for some to react will be using hot water and some are very less reactive uh, with the water so what we use basically we use uh, extremely hot steam right for example for aluminium we use steam uh, for magnesium we use hot water and as far as potassium and sodium are concerned we are basically using uh, we can use uh, non normal cold water you can say right uh, and there are certain metals that will be studying uh, in the after the reactivity series like which don't show any sort of reactivity towards the water now the best part about non metals is like they don't react with water whether it might be a uh, hot water cold water or even in the form of a steam right now uh, reaction of metal with again acids is again very very important right the reason being uh, one product that is formed is your salt of the corresponding metal along with the liberation of hydrogen gas that you have to be very very careful now uh, we will go towards the reaction of non metal with the acids then again one of my favorite basically the non metals they don't react with the acids only now uh, as far as the reaction of metal with the bases is concerned so what happens is like uh, these reactions uh, where the non metal reacts with react with the bases and all that is very complex for example i might say to you like potassium uh, hydroxide okay uh, like you can say zinc will react with potassium hydroxide zinc again a metal and potassium hydroxide basically a base uh, they'll uh, they'll form a potassium zincate sodium zincate you can say uh, if a sodium is reacting with the uh, potassium hydroxide and again these are very complex reactions which you will study in your plus 2 or plus 1 level right and again for as far as non metals are concerned they don't react with the bases uh, again a very complex reaction you can say right and uh, now comes the topic that is very very crucial at your level that is a displacement reaction but prior going to the displacement reaction we should be thorough with the, or we should be knowing what is a reactivity series so basically uh, as we have been discussing the term reactivity and uh, all what does it mean is like uh, certain metals show very high uh, peculiarly like they show rigorous uh, reaction so you can say vigorously they'll react with the different elements or compounds uh, present next to them but uh, certain will not be highly reactive so basically what scientists have done they have classified these metals uh, and they have arranged them in a order in which uh, in which what happens is like the highly reactive metals are placed at the top and the less reactive metals are placed at the bottom so if you can go keep on going down the uh, like this uh, table so there will be a decrease there will be a decrease in the reactivity so for we you know example we can say potassium and sodium are the uh, one of the highly reactive metals and the platinum gold and silver uh, you can say again very least reactive metal and that is the reason the gold ornaments that our mothers and sisters are wearing in their houses or any person is wearing we prefer them of gold and uh, uh, silver platinum the reason being they don't show reactivity towards water as we know that moisture is surrounding us continuously or with the oxygen or uh, you can say anything water like that substance 
so that's why they are preferred more right they don't get deteriorated for a, after a longer period of time right so what basically is displacement reaction that you have to understand it's like when a more reactive metal will displace a less reactive metal from the aqueous solution of its salt is known as displacement reaction right so we have this classical example of uh, copper sulfate and uh, iron right uh, which will be resulting in the formation of uh, iron sulfate along with the liberation of copper right now certain uh, what are the uses of common metals that uh, i'll not be uh, discussing right that you are highly uh, aware you would be having more idea about more idea than me as compared to about these things right now uh, noble metals is a topic that you do understand uh, again these are the metals which don't show reactivity toward anything for example uh, platinum is something which doesn't uh, is considered as a noble metal and depending upon the reactivity like basically they don't react with water or you can say air acids or bases right uh, and again you can say right gold and silver and platinum being highly malleable and tactile they uh, they are basically used for making jewelry or they used for making sheets and all right uh, gold is again used for plating uh, copper and silver items right platinum is used uh, for dentistry basically some highly uh, sophisticated devices are used for doing the surgical operations and all so they are preferred uh, to be made with platinum now next comes the topic of your alloys alloys is a basically a homogeneous mixture basically that is you cannot differentiate between uh, uh the components right so it is a mixture of uh, either a metal or metal or you can say a metal and a non metal right so again important of these are you know should be aware of uh, nickel brass bronze uh, even the best uh, bestest example i'll say is of steel right iron along with the uh, having some percentage of carbon is uh, the best example of uh, right there is a most common word being used in our day to day life so reason for mixture is that like uh, uh, you can say uh, you in enhance the life or you increase the shelf life of different uh, uh, like the constituent uh, metals right normally we know that uh, we have seen this iron element iron things might get uh, uh, rust after a period of time and this is something that we'll be discussing in the corrosion but steel will never get uh, you can say or it will take a very very long time for getting uh, affected by the corrosion and all right so last topic is of corrosion corrosion is nothing that we have again studied in the previous classes is the metal being eaten away by the uh, attack of you can say moisture or there is water and the uh, oxygen right so it occurs in mostly most of the uh, in almost all of the metals except for the noble or you can say for the ones which are very very less reactive right uh, like example silver uh, kya kehte hain silver is basically used for uh, uh making ornaments and all and if you have certain silver items in your house and you will see after a period of time uh, they'll start getting uh, they'll start fading their shininess right because of the formation of silver sulfide again for copper you can say copper carbonate and this green that is your basically green color uh, coating you'll find on the copper utensils and all so uh, rusting if you are uh, discussing it is a just specifically the term used for the corrosion of iron so what happens is like there is a continuous attack by of uh, of uh, water and your oxygen on the uh, iron and resulting in the formation of uh, ferrous oxide uh, with certain uh, molecules of water of crystallization and uh, number of water molecules are not specified that is why we use the formula x right and there are certain ways of uh, being uh, uh, protecting uh, our uh, metal uh, metal things or items uh, from the corrosion and these are like uh, by painting or greasing or oiling that is you covering your surface again so that it doesn't come in contact with your water and air then by galvanization we have seen uh, like it's like a uh, putting up a coating of zinc on the top of uh, iron or steel objects uh, by plating with tin and chromium right and the best way is to again uh, use alloys so that's it from this chapter